Cover Killer Nation, there's a lot of excitement on the frontier. Now, as you know, a couple of weeks ago I moved and Studio 3.0 still isn't up and running. Well, that's getting really, really close. So pretty soon we're going to have videos from over there. I mention that because whenever you look behind me, and of course a lot of it's obscured by this ridiculous chair, uh, you note that there's a lot of CDs there. It doesn't look like very much, mainly because there's a lot more that's already been taken over to the location of Studio 3.0. Uh, I have a lot of music, and a lot of it is of the heavy metal persuasion. And we've done uh, some of the best bands that are currently making music in a non-metal front. And actually, to be honest, I've done this idea somewhat before. I did it during the Top 10 week earlier this year. It was the Top 10 Current Metal Artists. Uh, what I want to do, however, for this video is to kind of do some of the best heavy metal, you know, artists making music today. But I don't want to do it where I'm kind of sitting here and I have some notes in mind and I have some ideas already uh, in my brain. I'd rather just kind of do this uh, shooting a little bit more from the hip and doing it more so as a freeform discussion and kind of see where that goes. Principally because I feel as though whenever things are kind of, you know... Uh, I, I guess put out and spelled out in order, there's a good opportunity that things are missed and things are just being thought about, you know, kind of at the spur of a hat without really, you know, just seeing where things go. And as most of my videos tend to go, I, I tend to get lost sometimes within my own thoughts uh, simply because I think of new things along the way. So let's get started. Let's talk about heavy metal today. Uh, we just recently did a video where I talked about 10 uh, heavy metal artists that I really, really wish would come back. So now it's fitting that we talk about artists that are already here and have been here perhaps for some of them for a very long time. Now, of course, if you're someone that's new to the heavy metal genre, uh, you may be getting into some of the, you know, typical hot-button artists, such as the Ozzy Osbournes, the Black Label Societies, Metallica's, Megadeth's, uh, and, and that vein, you know, Iron Maiden and Judas Priests of the world. Uh, however, whenever you are starting to the genre, maybe you are ignoring some of the keynote bands, either that or you're eventually going to get to them. Uh, some of these bands that have been around roughly for 20 to 30 years are still putting out really meaningful music and really important music. And of course, whenever we're in that uh, vein and in that formula, we're talking a lot about the thrash genre, mainly because uh, in the 1980s, thrash metal was king. It was one of the most important genres that heavy metal has ever had, principally because of the effect that it's had on really the fan base. You know, many people will cite Black Sabbath fairly about really, you know, coining heavy metal, even though it was only one part of the whole idea. But, you know, in the 1980s, there's just this huge explosion of heavy metal fans uh, thanks to the new wave of British heavy metal and thrash metal. So whenever you look at bands such as Overkill and you know Death Angel and Creator, whenever you take a look at the Teutonic thrash scene from uh, Germany, whenever you take a look at some of the bands that perhaps were in the second wave of thrash metal over here in America, there are a lot of great bands out there that have either reformed or have been formed and you know together throughout the whole entirety of the thrash diminishing uh, of the 1990s and then the thrash re-revival of the 2000s uh, that have just been putting out album after album that just seems to be greater and greater and greater than its previous. Uh, Overkill is one that really does really, really well and always is uh, kind of a seminal personal favorite of mine. However, Creator with Phantom Antichrist really, really reinvigorated a lot of different things. I can't say enough even to this day about Phantom Antichrist, simply because of how important uh, I really believe that that album is. Now, you know, there's going to be conflicting opinions about how good the album is. However, we have to agree, uh, on at least a semi-universal front, that damn, that was one fucking hell of an album. And they'd already had a great career before that, so this is something where they just keep on continuing. But along those same lines, you think about bands that perhaps have released something new this year. You think about your Death Angels, you think about your Annihilators, and immediately it sparks memories. You think about other bands such as Onslaught or Heathen, that are still continuing uh, to deliver us some very, very important thrash albums, really showing us that thrash is still alive and well. Not to mention the fact that this is a genre that doesn't necessarily have to do too, too much to its own sound in order to still sound just as badass as it did whenever it first came out. And whenever you have something like that that has a certain element of simplicity to it, however has a complexity to it on the musical front, then if you're able to still keep people really into your music, and if it still sounds fresh with each and every album, even though it's doing kind of the same thing over and over again, sort of, kind of, Man, you got something really powerful there. And that's something that I think a lot of modern metal bands don't really understand. They simply think that they can continue to do the same thing over and over again, but not really, you know, do anything to build. And I think that's what these bands have been able to do. 
They've been able to build a little bit. They've been able to kind of toy with some different things. And that's the reason why it continues to be a little bit interesting. A lot of modern metal tends to just copy-paste that which they did on the last record. And I think that's the reason why a lot of those bands are okay. You know, you're going to get a lot of young kids into them that really like that same sound. And, and, you know, just in a different format on a different album. But... Overall, the allure is not going to be there permanently. Either that, or if it is, that may be the furthest in which some people go. Now, you might realize also that on the channel, I haven't talked about a lot of death metal lately. I, I just talked about the new Cataclysm album, and if you really want to be you know, direct with it, I just talked about the new Sepultura album, uh, which are two key bands of the death metal genre. Uh, with Sepultura, it was a little bit more along the lines of death thrash, kind of uh, pioneering something that would come and really you know, kind of explore itself a little bit more, of course, with them exploring it on a little bit more of a darker, sometimes thematic level. And, and both of those bands are still putting out very meaningful, meaningful music also. Uh, Cannibal Corpse, I mentioned in the top 10, you know, best current metal bands uh, video. However, I have to do it again, simply because uh, these guys are pioneers. These guys have been around for a long, long time, not to mention they're still making some, you know, really, really critically good albums that not only are getting the respect of a lot of different individuals, uh, but also also are getting the respect of the charts. And then you have lesser known bands, bands that are able to kind of take things to uh, an even deeper level. And I'm talking bands such as Devourment. If you haven't heard of Devourment, these guys, man oh man, they have a really dirty, dusky, murky sound to them. You know, literally sounds like slime off of a dilapidated building, and it definitely works for them because it's still well constructed. There's a lot of great you know, death metal style out there uh, that really just needs to be explored. So instead of citing individual bands for this, I would definitely say you really have to explore this genre with an open mind and definitely find something that applies to you, something that really just speaks to you, because there's going to be something out there. Whether it be a classic band that may just be, you know, either on hiatus or just working on material or going through legal battles, you know, bands such as Obituary, you know, you have... There's still just so much out there, a wealth of different information from bands that are still around, even if they're just kind of in a period of, you know, inactivity. I wish I could put death on this list, of uh, obviously, but I've done a discography of them, and they're no longer currently making music, although we've been waiting for the second Control Denied album now for probably about as long as we've been waiting for Winter Sun's time. Well, we got time. Uh, we're still waiting on part two, though. Speaking of... Winter Sun is another band that a lot of people should get into. Another one that is uh, really privy for a lot of excitement. And it's not just simply because of the build and the hype for Time Part 1, you know, which is really an album that, regardless of uh, how good it was going to be, perhaps wasn't going to be able to deliver for a lot of people because of just the time it took for time to come out. And that was really hard to say. Uh, but this is still a band that is really kind of redefining the idea of epic style metal and really, you know, it, it's showing one person's passion and love and, and really he's had some struggles with this. He's really kind of made this his pet project, his baby, and it is, you know, it took, it took a lot of time, but it was still definitely worth it. It was a really good album. Uh, but Winter Sun is still a band that definitely should be explored and should be checked out. I know a lot of you probably have, however, it's certainly one to continue to uh, kind of uh, listen to and hear about what's going on with those groups. Folk metal has gotten a huge explosion. Folk metal has done really, really well, and really you can subdivide folk metal, and you can even throw in other adjectives like pirate metal, like Aelstrom, oh my god. These guys are just fucking awesome. You know, you gotta really dig something like this whenever you're able to, you know, combine something like sea shanties, either that or just anything that's ridiculous enough for pirates and stuff like that, you know, and you can combine metal with that, that has a really good flavor to it, that has a really good sound and vibe to it, then man, you're doing something right. Uh, Aelstrom, Corpaclani, Fintroll, you know, all of these different bands that are out there uh, that really have just a great pulse on what folk metal is all about and how they're able to really uh, replicate it to the public, you know, and just really get some great music out there. You could even uh, go even further with bands like that and, and find even more. And it's just kind of... It, it, it's amazing because there are a lot of bands out there that perhaps are no longer recording either that or they just never got big enough where they could afford it. Uh, but yet there is a wealth and a swath out there. The problem with doing something like this is that uh, whenever you wonder about current metal bands, you kind of wonder if some of them are still doing things. I know for a long time I thought Pharmacon was still a band, but didn't realize until I did the 10 bands I really wish were still around video that they had actually gone inactive in 2010. So that's where that kind of becomes a little bit, 
eh, unruly and grimy. Now, of course, there's a lot of bands out there that a lot of people know about. A lot of people love these bands regardless of what's going on. You know, we know who we're talking about here. We're talking about the Opets, the Catatonias, the Porcupine Trees of the world. You know, bands that definitely get universal acclaim, whether it be from a, a lot of different, you know, heavy metal reviewers, either that or publications or just fans. These are bands that you know, people really should get into, and they're almost becoming as essential uh, uh, to the darker side of metal uh, as Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, and some of the other bands I listed at the entrance of this video are for just getting into the genre as a whole, and you have to understand the reason for that. And the reason for that is just in the fact that for its time, they really were able to expand the universe a little bit, and not to mention there's this deep interconnectivity between the three projects, considering uh, Mike from Opeth sang with uh, Mikkel on Storm Corrosion, Mike from Opeth, uh, sang along with, um, I think I fucked that up, Mike with Opeth sang with Steven. Uh, but Mike from Opeth also sang with Catatonia on a couple of releases uh, whenever their vocalist had some uh, vocal, uh, vocal issues. Uh, so there is a deep interconnectivity there, and there's still bands that are making just viable, very good music. Uh, and then there's just also, you know, there's the deeper underbelly of that as well, the different bands that have kind of come as a result of that. Now, I'm going to still speak once again about my boys from the UK and Sanhedrin. You know, I really, uh, I'm, lo I'm hoping these guys are able to stay afloat because they just are just such a great young act. This is not something that you're going to be able to find in stores. You really have to look for them. And I've been promoting them now for about two years, but I really just, I, I love their material that much. They have that much really to offer. And the main reason why is because even though the idea of like a, a, a black and death metal idea uh, that, that has a lot of melody to it and a lot of great sound to it uh, really sounds as though it's not all that new. In fact, it does have a relatively dated uh, ideal to it. Uh, these guys just find a way to make it kind of interesting and kind of really turn it up a little bit. They dialed it up whenever they decided to go epic because I remember their, uh, their debut release, Salvation in the Sin, uh, was not one that really utilized this the same way, but was still very, very solid. They were able to do it in more of a serialized album format, uh, where each song, I, I don't think, really touched any higher than the five- or six-minute mark. However, with uh, their EP that they released a couple of years back, uh, and to the internal nether uh, the, uh, of Lost and Stricken Souls, I, I really just fucking botched that, but you know what I'm talking about if you've been with this channel for a long time. Uh, the, they really were able to expand it into a essentially one song on one EP. However, it was subdivided into three tracks. It was certainly well worth it. It was a fantastic track. It reminded me, there's a lot of similarities you could draw to the, uh, the autotheism uh, idea that was just done on uh, the Faceless's last album. So there was just a, uh, a lot of cool comparisons that were able to be made there. Now, whenever you get into the more atmospheric, the darker, the weirder spectrums, you have a lot more avenues in which you can travel. You can travel into the li uh, the lines of a Kalesia or some, uh, something like that. You can go a little bit darker with bands such as Absu or Agaloc or Arcturus. Yes, they're technically still, you know, alive and well. You know, you can go into a band such as Acid Witch. You know, you can go into a band such as Neurosis. You know, you can go in all of these different directions, and that's the reason why I really, really enjoy uh, kind of going in that direction whenever I look for bands. I don't necessarily like the cookie-cutter approach, where I'm basically just analyzing, you know, one death metal band from the other. And, and it's not a knock towards death metal, and it's not a knock towards death metal bands, but it is in the fact that I do tend to get a little bit of that similarity feeling uh, half of the times, and it sometimes becomes a little more difficult to differentiate. So I like to expand the horizons a little bit with bands of this regard. That's the reason why, whenever I did the ten metal bands that I wish we're still back. There's a lot of avant-garde on that list. There's a lot of bands that kind of fit this whole profile, principally because there's a lot for them to offer. Now, Napalm Death is another band that is definitely uh, one of the best still making music today. They've been around since the 1980s, and they have just been expanding and really modernizing their sound as each passing album and year has passed. But then you also have to consider other legends of that genre, such as Brutal Truth, and then you have to, you know, consider bands such as Murder Construct that are newer, that are doing something that's a little bit you know, different and exciting, you know, you have to look at all ranges, you know, you have to also look at the one that's a little bit more traditional in its style that really pushes a little bit more towards what grind metal is and really even throwing in a little bit of the uh, the mellow death to it with a band such as Aborted, and you have a lot of different avenues right there. I still remember the first time I ever heard uh, 
the uh, the Archaic Abattoir, either that or uh, the, the Saw and the Carnage Dawn uh, albums such as that variety, and just, you know, it blew me away. It was something that really kind of got me into that side for a little while, you know, and you explore even further from that point forward. Now, Black Metal is another one that is definitely uh, still has a lot of momentum with bands such as What's Hain out there. I really would love to see another album uh, from another band in uh, Dark Fortress. Uh, some people really wanted me to clamor for the new Satyricon album. There's a main reason why I didn't do that. I didn't like it all of that much. And by the time I actually got the opportunity to listen to it, I didn't feel as though it was relevant any longer for me to speak about it. Because this was one that really wasn't going to have a lasting power for me, at least. And it was definitely not one that was going to affect the Top 25 list or anything else Cover Killer Nation related at all. So unfortunately, there is that. However, some of their older work is certainly worth it, and Enslaved is just a band that continues to evolve with each passing album, really taking progressive metal into Viking metal into black metal and combining it into a witch's brew and just pooping out just great records seemingly one after the other starting in the 2000s. And their old stuff, by the way, by the way, if, it, if that makes it sound like I'm shitting all over their old stuff, I'm not, because that stuff, <laughs> not bad either. Really, really damn good. Definitely a band that I highly recommend a lot of different people to getting into. But what about bands such as Tear? Why not Tear? Tear is definitely another great band. Uh, a lot of people are getting into Turistas. That's another great band to check out. You know, you can literally go into, you know, all of these different avenues and formats. A lot of bands that I just talked about uh, within the past couple of weeks in the thrash metal genre, for example. Uh, Toxic Holocaust, which is one we're going to get to, is one. Skeleton Witch. We've uh, talked recently about, uh, I believe, uh, Fuel by Fire and Municipal Waste has gotten something that's brewing up their sleeves, I'm sure. The Art of Partying is probably one of the most overused lines on Facebook, Jesus Christ. But it's a good song, and they're a good band, and it's a lot of fun, and it's like thrash crossover revival, and you have to just really, really appreciate everything that they're able to do there. Uh, bands such as Silosis, I have one right here that comes to mind with Holy Grail, you know, and even, you know, you can't tell what this is, but this is Lightning Swords of Death. That's another band that definitely has a lot of capability and a lot of potential. Forgotten Tomb is oftentimes forgotten, and I don't think they should be. They are definitely a band that has a lot of possibility. Shining is doing just wonderful things. I, I could go on and on and on about this. We could talk about uh, bands from the past that really I wish that we were still around that are still influencing people like Sacred Reich. I think Sacred Reich just got a cover from Cataclysm. Uh, it, it just keeps going on and on and on and on, quite literally. And you know what? This is the part where I need your help, Cover Killer Nation. This is the part where we need as a community to continue to bring the idea of music uh, to people. And after that, I'm going to get into the very last subsection of this whole construct, and then it's time for us to go. However, uh, in the comments, talk to people who are younger metal fans or just metal fans that are looking for something brand new, and definitely recommend them more and more and more. And now we're going to finally get into the very final thing of progressive music. Of course, progressive music is something that's sort of a bread and butter uh, facet of mine, you know, with bands these days such as Riverside and Porcupine Tree. <laughs> but also Dream Theater. We just covered Dream Theater in the Dream Theater discography. Uh, but what about... There, there, there are a lot of other bands out there that we could talk about in this realm as well. What about Beardfish? Beardfish is definitely one that some people may not talk about as often. Uh, people should not forget Threshold. They shouldn't forget bands such as Enchant. They should definitely, definitely explore the prog music that's coming out there. Whether or not it's from individuals that have been in the game for 30 to 40 years and are still making music or not, this is definitely something that needs to be explored. Uh, Spock's Beard is still doing things. You know, I've had people ask me, what did you think of that new album? I actually kind of dug it, but never got a chance to review it. Arion, I know that we just talked about his new album, and I know that a lot of you know about him, but definitely check him out if you haven't or if you have not explored the whole entirety of his catalog. The first seven albums are all connected in some way. Definitely, 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 definitely check them out. But yes, there's a prog magazine out there that is giving a lot of different newer and younger and exciting prog metal bands the opportunity uh, to really get their name out there. I think there is a band out there called King Bathmat that has a great ability. Phil Collins' son is in a band. Uh, there are bands also, also out there like Streams of Passion that you know have some old stuff out there. there there's lots. There's tons. 
Progressive metal is this like secretive realm that is only touched on by those who are the diehards, but those who are the diehards love the material because it just has a certain musical element to it that is unlike anything that they've ever heard, and plus, the sound ability is incredible. There's so many different things that you can do with a genre like that, but there's also so many different things that you can do with the whole entire genre of heavy metal. So once again, guys, these are just a couple. I've probably, these are a lot of bands I've probably talked about on the channel, and I understand that there might be a bit of disappointment in that. However, it's true. These are some of the best bands that are making music today. That doesn't necessarily mean that's the reason why they're on the channel a lot, but it's because these are things that I'm excited about, you know, bands that I'm excited about, things that I really, really like. And as I explore more, I find more, you know, and it once again is a question of whether or not the band is still around for a video like this. So help out all of your fellow metal fans. Don't be one to subdivide. I mean, you know, I could easily talk about, you know, bands like Born of Osiris, which I found their last album to be kind of poopy, but, you know, they're still a good band that has a lot of abilities, but you're not going to hear me talk about Amur. You're not going to hear me talk about, I think they're called Neurotic November, which is a new band that comes out that basically has the influences of Attila, Amur, and Asking Alexandria. Wow, strike one, strike two, strike three, you're out. You might as well be a St. Louis Cardinal, because the Boston Red Sox of metal just said, fuck you. But yeah, some of the best artists in music today that is here in the heavy metal sector, I'm sure there's tons and tons more. Because there are. Because King Diamond's still out there for fuck's sake. Because Venom might still be around, you know. Wow. Yeah. And of course, th there's a little band called Motorhead. And Black Sabbath. And Iron Maiden. See how this can go on and on? I'm going to stop this now. Enjoy this. Discuss it. Love it. Live it. Spread it. Heavy. Fucking. Wait for it. Wait for it.